I was recently part of a networking group and in that networking group, they asked me to prepare a short presentation. So in this presentation, I thought that I would share with them because these were business executive, executives, business leaders. I'd share with them the high performance success secrets that I've learned um, during my time as a consultant, business advisor, and also as a business owner. So here is my presentation on high performance success. From time to time, I'm always asked by my clients, Mohammed, how do we become more successful? What can we do to achieve high performance, both in our personal lives and in our businesses? And I'm constantly providing them ideas, strategies, solutions, both for themselves personally, and also for them in their business and to take their businesses to the next level. So I'm gonna share with you five ideas that's gonna help you achieve high performance success. The first, the first thing that you need to think about and you need to focus on is when you have a new idea, you've got to give that new idea 30 minutes each day. Clear what you need to do from your schedule and find 30 minutes. That's it. For anything to become successful, for a new idea to be launched in your, in your business or for you to undertake a new project or personal uh, activity, give that item 30 minutes of your time each and every day. Now, some people might argue and say, Mohammed, I don't have 30 minutes. But think about it. Maybe you could watch less TV. Maybe you could scroll social media a lot less. Maybe you could check 30 minutes less of, of email. If you were to plan your day better, everyone, you know, no one can tell me that they are maximizing their, their day perfectly and every hour is accounted for. You will be able to find 30 minutes. So if you've got that great new concept and idea that you want to launch or you want to uh, uh, take on a new activity in your life that's going to get success for you, then give that activity 30 minutes of your time. The second thing that you want to do, and you want to focus on the first action. What is the very first thing that you can do on that new idea that you have? Right? Begin. Take that very first action. So say, for example, you want to get fitter, you want to feel better, you want a healthier lifestyle. What is the first thing that you might do? You might put on your running shoes and then go and take a walk. Or you might take a, a, you know, a spoon less uh, sugar in your tea or your coffee. That's a very first action that you need to take. Um, now, this one is slightly contrary to what I've said before, and I'm going to explain how it actually works hand in hand. Right? Previously, I, I spoke about a concept from Jim Rohn, which was uh, finish the day before you start it. So that means you want to plan everything out ahead of time and know exactly what it is you're going to, going to do for the day and before the day started. So you've got your schedule and the night before you plan everything and you're ready to go. A first action is very different to that. A first action is, well, what is the first thing I need to do based on um, the things that I put down on my, uh, you know, that, that I scheduled out for me to do. So say, for example, I planned that I was going to start writing my book. Well, what's the first action that you need to take there? The first action would be to write the first page. You don't have to plan out the whole book, every single chapter, page for page. No, if you write the first page, you'll t that's the first action to you moving on to page number two, page number three, and so on. And then what you can do is, using that Jim Rohn's concept, you could then plan out your chapter or plan out tomorrow, the next day, on what, what it is you're going to write um, on the next page and, and so on. So a first action is very important to you actually succeeding. You've got that new idea. It's a great new idea. But if you don't take any action on that, it's just, a, just an idea. It's just going to stay there, right? So you've got to take a first action. The next thing I want you to do is to focus on giving that um, new idea, the new project that you're working on, 90 days. Give it 90 days. You don't have to worry about thinking that I've got to do this for the rest of my life or whatever. Focus on 90 days. 90 days is a, is a nice period. It's a structure. And I use 90 days because it's part of a program that I used to be, used to consult on and a, and a, and a system that I used to help 
uh, business owners implement in their business. And we created uh, a 90 day world in which they live and they focused on projects, activities for that 90 days. The reason for 90 days and, and not 12 months is because 12 months is just a, just too long. Too many things can happen in the space of, of a year. Who, how many of us have set uh, New Year's resolutions and within the first couple of months, we've dropped those those ideas. It's just too far to think about um, in the future. But a 90 day sprint or a 90 day world allows you to stay focused, stay motivated in, in that period of time. There's been numerous research as well that's been conducted and said that if you give yourself a 90 day period on which you want to achieve things, usually you'll see it through because it's not long enough and it's not short enough. It's kind of that middle ground on um, on time frames for you to be able to achieve things. So this great big new idea that you've got or even a, a, an important project that you've got, give it 90 days, see through to that 90 days. If you feel, uh, you know, you, you struggle and you, you feel uh, you lose motivation, just think about it and say, look, I've just got to get to 90 days you'll find a way to, you should be able to find a way to do that. The same thing is um, in the sense of, um, you know, if it's something that you uh, uh, are not keen on doing, but if you give it 90 days, you might find that you develop the habits and you break through. So say for example, exercising, it's a hard thing to, to keep momentum. But if you say, look, I'm just gonna focus on 90 days. I'm not gonna do this for the rest of my life. I wanna see if I can get fitter and healthier in 90 days. Once you get to, I'm sure when you get to the 88, 89th day, you're gonna, you're gonna have built up habits that's gonna carry you through past that 90 days. And then what, you, what do you do after that? Just set another 90 day cycle and say, well, can I do this, continue what I did, this hard work that I did for the last 90 days in that last sprint, can I carry that over to another 90 days and just work in that period? And you'll find that a lot of the ultra successful people focus on that. They give themselves shorter time frames to achieve the objectives that they want because it puts pressure on them to take action and do things. And also it allows them to, um, to, to develop habits as well in that. And if you find that after 90 days, it's not something that you want to pursue, well, then that's it. You can stop there and you can pick up a new activity and item after that, but you've given it 90 days. It allows you to um, really work through and say, well, is this something that I want to continue or I, I don't see this uh, something that I need to have in my life right now. So I've given it its 90 days, days and I'll move on from there. The fourth thing, and this is one of the biggest one, one of my favorite ones here, this is to, to, to create a drop list. So we've always been taught to create a to-do list, but instead I want you to flip that over and create a drop list. A drop list is basically things that you take away from your to-do list. So if you've got five things on your to-do list, what can you take away from that five things? Because if you've only got three things to do, hey, that's only three things now that you can do. And the time that you were going to spend to do the remaining two is time that you can spend with families, time you can do a, a hobby, time for personal, you know, going to the gym, exercising, something like that. What is it that you need to drop from your to-do list? And the reason you need to take things off your to-do list is because you, you as an individual, as a business owner, as a leader, uh, as an entrepreneur, you need to focus on your the items that's on your to-do list and that is the best use of your time what is the most important things that you as that person need to do and not things that is uh, uh the, not the best use of your time so drop those things from your to-do list now what do you do with those things that you drop on, on your to-do list right you can't just drop them and, and and let them go sometimes they they still need to be done so use th this this approach what can I delegate? If I can't delegate it, can I possibly automate that in some way or form using some sort of system, technology, uh, or, or, or process? And if I can't do that, then finally, is it something that I still need to do? Then let me let, let's find ways of eliminating that and dropping that off. So, delegating it, automating it, or eliminating it. Get it off your to-do list focus on what is your most important things. Because if you're focusing on those important things, then you are certainly gonna drive better results and outcomes for yourself. And that's what you wanna achieve, high performance,
doing things that is best use of your time, not, not mundane um, activities and tasks. And then finally, which is also one of my favorite and, and, and big things is a Friday accountability call or a check-in call. Arrange for a friend, a colleague, maybe it's your business partner or, or it's a family member, definitely someone that is a human that you can speak to on a, on, on, on a set day. Fridays is a great day because it's the end of the usual the, the usual business working week. So it's a Friday checking call. Schedule this call in uh, at a specific time and have that set every week at that time. You have your Friday accountability or check-in call. And what do you use this call for? You check in. So what did you do well this week? What didn't you do well this week? What was on your to-do list that you you know, this is your most important things on on that to-do list that you did well. What were things that you actually dropped off and you were able to, let's say, delegate, automate or eliminate uh, out of your out of your life? Check in. The, these accountability calls is so powerful. And uh, I know this for a fact because I've been doing this in my in uh, for myself and also as part of my, my team. We uh, I have a, a, a check in call. And what happens is it's vice versa. So they check in with me and I give them feedback on what they've done, you know, telling me about what they've done the week, successes and, um, you know, things that they need to improve on and vice versa. I then share with them. And I've seen an absolute increase in my productivity and performance. Because what happens is I might be doing certain things and if I'm, I'm, I'm slacking, but the other person that I'm checking in with and they, you know, they, uh, I'm holding them accountable with, if they performing well, then I want to raise my standard because next week I don't want to be the person that shows up on the call that, you know, dropped off and, and slacked off or, or, or didn't do the things that I said I, I was going to do because the other person that, uh, that I'm holding accountable as well, they, they doing uh, their things on their list. So it holds both of us accountable in, in that sense. And because of that, it's raising both our levels of performance. And that's what, what you want. You want to be able to constantly raise you, your performance levels. And these Friday accountability calls does exactly that. And like I said, I've seen the success um, personally and also in, in, in our business of how these checking calls have made such a big difference in my performance and the team's performance uh, as well. So there you have it. Those are basically five tips that um, will drive high performance for you. And these tips are things that you can implement also in your business and share among your team. Right. It's new idea. Give it 30 minutes every single day. From there, you want to take the first action. What is the first actions that I need to make sure that I take um, to drive that success in, in that um new idea or concept that I want to work on. Then you've got your 90 day sprint. Focus for 90 days and, and, and give those projects its time so that you can see them through, develop habits and uh, achieve the outcomes that you want. Fourth thing, drop list. Get things off that to-do list that you don't need to be doing, that you can um, delegate, automate and eliminate. Focus on your most important activities and the skills uh, put your skills to best use. And then finally, your Friday accountability and check-in calls. Now, for that, I also want to share with you, I developed and created a four-part video series that talks about how ultra-successful people have achieved the success in their life. And I share with you the tips, the hacks, and, uh, and the strategies that they've used to achieve the success in their life. Up on the screen there, I've got some images of some of these successful people. We've got Usain Bolt, one of the greatest athletes of all time, right? What are the strategies that he used to become uh, such an elite athlete? We've got Bill Gates, again, Microsoft, uh, CEO of Microsoft, um, chairman of Microsoft, built one of the largest companies in the world. We've got Elon Musk there. We've got Jeff Bezos. These guys are the richest, wealthiest men um, in, in the world. Oprah Winfrey. What did she do to become one of the most successful uh, TV uh, presenters of all time? Uh, we've got Michael Jordan, Cristiano Ronaldo, Steve Jobs. So in this four-part series, what I've done is I've, I've, I've distilled down and I've, uh, I've, I've, I've put down in, in each different part of the video the different successes and the tips and the strategies that these people have used 
to achieve you know phenomenal success in their lives and also for the businesses that they run and the people um, that have benefited from those as well so in 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 part number one i share with you particularly the uh, the tips the strategies and the hacks part number uh, two i go through uh, some of the books that these icons um, have have read and the strategies that they've learned out of these six, uh, these books I go through some of the successful quotes from these uh, 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 high performance people as well and then finally we wrap it all up with uh, some bonuses that you get as well so it's made up of videos audios and PDFs that you can download and print and maybe stick up on your on your wall that will remind you um, about how these successful people, the tips that they use to become successful. So to get access to it, it's a free four-part video series. You can just go onto my website. I've got the link up on the screen, mohammedsay.com.au forward slash success dash series. Um, there's a nice big button on the homepage as well that asks you, do you want to uh, stop competing and dominate? And then there's uh, the access now button there. So I wish you all the success and I hope you dominate in your line of work, in your field, and in your personal life, and you achieve the success that these icons have achieved in their life.